All right, so you can just watch the first part of this video and take notes when we get in your book, but we're gonna be studying quadrilaterals in our next section, and we'll start specifically with parallelograms. The symbol for a parallelogram is this, and I'm gonna create parallelogram A, B, C, D. And what makes a parallelogram a parallelogram by definition is that the opposite sides run parallel to each other. So those are parallel and these are parallel. So I'm gonna create that here. On my graph paper, we know that two horizontal segments run parallel to one another. That's how the graph paper is designed. And we also know that the opposite sides of a ruler run parallel. So I'm gonna create a parallelogram using those facts. Let me out my ruler slip just a little bit. Okay, so this is gonna be parallelogram A, B, C, D. Point D, A, B, and C. And I just wanna explore the properties of the parallelogram briefly. So I know the sides run parallel to one another. Um, I don't need to mark them, but I could. So this is true opposite sides are parallel, and I'm just gonna use my compass and do a little exploring. So if I measure the distance between points A and B, you can see that it's equal to C and D, and the same thing is gonna be true if I measure the distance between points B and C, that's gonna equal A and D. So not only are the opposite sides parallel, they're also congruent to each other. So these are equal and so are these. And then let's look at the angles for a moment. If I take my tracing paper and I trace angle A, so this was angle A, I can bring it across to the opposite angle and you can see that A and C are congruent to each other. If I trace angle B, I'm gonna use this as one of the sides of B. So here's one of the sides of B and here's the other. Here's angle B. B is opposite D. Let's just verify that B and D are congruent to one another and they are. But notice that A and B make a linear pair and these two angles are gonna add up to 180. They're supplementary. So the opposite angles are supplement, I'm sorry, the opposite angles are congruent to one another a was congruent to C, and the consecutive angles were supplementary. They added up to 180, okay? Likewise, if I draw the diagonals in this parallelogram, so if I connect A to C, a diagonal connects vertices together that are not already connected. So A is already connected with B and D. Those make the sides of the parallelogram. When I connect it to C, this is a diagonal of that parallelogram. There's one more I can draw when I connect B and D. So notice that the diagonals intersect each other at this point. Um, are those diagonals equal in length? There's the length of AC, but we can see that BD is a lot longer, so they're not equal to one another. However, if I measure from B to this intersection point and move my compass down, I can see that it's the same distance down to D. Let's go ahead and call that E. And when I measure from A to E, on the other diagonal, I can see it's the same distance from point E to point C. So what happens is these diagonals bisect one another. They cut each other in half, and it might lead you to question whether the diagonals also bisect the angles of this parallelogram. However, if I trace the right portion of angle B that was formed by that diagonal and compare it over here, those two pieces, I don't know if you can see very well, but they are not equal. Um, so we've discovered all the properties of a parallelogram. So opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary, and the diagonals cut one another in half. 
So let's go to our books now. And um, you'll see that all of those theorems are listed here. I just wanted you to see that they were true. So we're on page 13 now um, in our new, our new book. <clears throat> all right, so again, let's just hit the highlights. So this is the symbol that we're going to use to show that we have a parallelogram. Um, and like I said, by definition, it's a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. That's just the definition of a parallelogram. And then these are the theorems. These are the things that I just showed you informally. The opposite sides are congruent, the opposite angles are congruent, and the consecutive angles will be supplementary to one another. I didn't talk about this one, but if it has one right angle, then it has four right angles. Um, just very quickly, so if I have a parallelogram and one of the angles is 90 degrees, sorry, one of the angles is 90 degrees, well, I know its consecutive angle is going to be supplementary, so that's gonna make that one 90. And then this angle, its consecutive angle is also supplementary, so it's gonna be 90. Since the consecutive angles are supplementary, they all would have to be 90, and the opposite angles, of course, are gonna be congruent as well. Um, we probably won't use that theorem quite as much. All right, so let's just work some problems using these properties, and then on the following page, it deals with the fact that the diagonals bisect one another. Okay, so we know this is a parallelogram, given parallelogram A, B, so I know for a fact that these sides run parallel, so therefore all these theorems are true. So CD is congruent to AB. That means that the distance between points C and D is equal to A and B, just definition of congruence. So since we know that AB is four, then we know that CD is also going to be four feet. Problem solved. Okay. All right, so the same thing. Um, we know that we're dealing with parallelogram, so we want to find the measures. The opposite sides are running parallel. Um, in order to find the measure of angle D, I can see that I know the measure of its opposite angle. So since F is 106 degrees, so is D. And then for segment FG, it is opposite segment DE, so those segments will be congruent, so it's just going to be 8. All right, not too terribly difficult. All right, so um, let's go ahead and do a quick proof. So we'll do a couple of proofs actually. All right, so again, these symbols are telling us that we're dealing with two parallelograms in this picture. Um, so the very first statement says that they're parallelograms. We know that because it was given. All right, so how do I know that HJ is congruent to PK? and that PK is congruent to ML. Well, these are opposite sides in the top parallelogram and these are opposite sides in the bottom parallelogram. So we know that the opposite sides of, I do this, parallelogram are congruent. Sorry, it's difficult to write in this book. So how are we ending up with the final statement? Why am I done? Well, I'm finished because HJ is congruent to PK and that same PK is congruent to ML. So if they're both congruent to PK, then we can take out the thing in the middle and say that the first is congruent to the last. That's the transitive property when we cut out the middleman. All right, so the same thing. Um, only this time we only have one parallelogram in our proof. So JKLM is a parallelogram, and we know, given to us, that KN is congruent to KL. Well, if you look at that, this we're gonna use this information, you can see that this is an isosceles triangle here. So the first statement it puts all of the given down at once. And then it goes on to say that um, the reason we're going to use for this next statement is if we were dealing with a parallelogram, then we know its opposite angles are congruent to each other. So since JK LM is a parallelogram, and I'm trying to prove that angle J is congruent to something, I'm going to go ahead and say that J is congruent to L. Angle J is congruent to angle L. Those are the opposite angles in that parallelogram. 
I'm trying to prove that J is congruent to K in L. Well, here's K in L, and you know in this isosceles triangle that these two angles are the base angles, and the base angles are always congruent in an isosceles triangle. That is the isosceles triangle theorem. If you have an isosceles triangle, then the base angles are congruent. I wish there was an extra step in this proof that said this is an isosceles triangle by definition, but that's okay. All right, so we know that angle N is congruent to angle L. And sorry, I need to call that KNL. <clears throat> I can't just call it angle N because I'm not sure which angle I'm talking about. All right, and then once again, we're just gonna use the transitive property here. If J is congruent to L, and that same angle L is congruent to K in L, then we can cut out the thing in the middle and say that the first is congruent to the last. That's the transitive property once again, okay? Now they go on and they talk about the diagonals of a parallelogram. The diagonals bisect each other. And another thing that the diagonals do is they do separate the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. And I'm afraid I don't have a piece of tracing paper um, large enough to show you that. However, um, I have a pair of scissors. Let me do that really quick. So I could do it with either diagonal, but let's just look at diagonal D, A, B. So there's the top triangle and that makes this one down here, of course, the bottom triangle. So let me quickly cut out the, the top triangle. And then I can take that triangle and just place it there and you can see that those are congruent to one another. And that would have been true if I had done it along the other diagonal as well, okay? For any parallelogram at all. So it splits the quadrilateral into congruent triangles. So let's just do example three and then we will spend the rest of the time in class looking at more problems and um, a little more complicated applications of what we just learned. So we wanna find X and Z. We've been told in this picture that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. The measure of angle A, D, C, which is this angle, is 4X, and the measure of angle D, A, B, which is this top angle up here, is 2X minus six. Well, those are consecutive angles in that parallelogram, and we know that those are supplementary. So if you add those two angles together, it's going to add up to 180. Um, what was the measure of ADC using substitution? That was 4X, and DAB was 2X minus 6. We're just going to solve for X now. So they <laughs> don't give us much room to work here. Let me do it over here. So we're going to have that 180 is equal to 6X minus 6. Add 6 to both sides, and we'll get that 186 equals 6X. Divide both, those, both sides by 6, excuse me, and you're going to end up with 31 for X when we divide. So X is 31. And then we want to find the value of Z. Notice that Z is part of the expression that's representing the pieces of diagonal AC. And we know that that diagonal was bisected by the other one. E is the midpoint of this segment, so this piece is equal to that piece. So those are congruent to each other because the diagonals bisect. So we're gonna, so that means their lengths are equal. We'll substitute in the values for the expressions. So AE was three Z minus four, CE is Z plus five. And now we wanna solve for Z. Again, I'll just do the work over here because we don't have the room for that. So we can subtract Z from both sides, collecting our variables on one side. So two times C minus four equals five. Add four to the other side and you're gonna get that two Z equals nine. Divide both sides by two, cut nine and a half and you'll get four and a half or 4.5 for Z. All right, we'll continue this in class.